guys, um, I want to start in the UK today uh, where Exchequer, um, or effectively the quasi Prime Minister, um, the, the Chancellor, uh, rewound um, all of the uh, budget moves that um, Truss had put in place and the pound um, benefit from that. So we can see here the uh, UK 10 year bonds um, fell and fell quite heavily. Uh, that aside, they've still got issues with inflation, which is coming out um, uh, this week, and obviously um, stagnant growth. So they rewinding the the budget measures, uh, I guess, is a start, but they still need to um, obviously deal with the um, the issues at hand. So. Whilst um, that's good for the pound um, on the short term, uh, I think they've still got a, uh, a number of issues to to deal with. Further further afield, um, we're seeing uh, well, actually, let's stay in let's stay in bond land and uh, go to the U.S. ten years, which are creeping ever higher. So, why stocks um, all of a sudden got bid on this um, yesterday? I think, um, as I mentioned last week, we're going to get that Christmas rally, but it's going to be a shallow rally because of the issues that um, you know, you've got rising interest rates, you've got inflation still high, so corporate earnings, whilst they generally do well during the Christmas rally um, from the Christmas spending, uh, they've still got issues as well. So I wouldn't expect this market to... Um, Produce major highs and come and uh, you know over the next two or three months come and beat that, but we'll certainly put this under pressure and maybe even this high under pressure um, before interest rate rises start to bite. So it could be a um, I don't think it's a dead cat bounce, but it's certainly a bear market rally, which um, might see this sort of level uh, come under pressure, um, and <clears throat> from that flow. We're seeing uh, US dollar um, coming off, even though interest rates are still peaking. This is um, the safe haven flow, so people are um, taking on risk and they don't need the um, US dollars, and so they're um, pulling money out of the US dollars and putting it into, the, into stocks. And as I mentioned uh, last week, I think this um, we've now seen the high um, in the sort of over the next for the next few months anyway. And we'll see Euro start to uh, track back towards parity and maybe even through it. Um, and the Aussie dollar should sort of certainly get back up towards 65 uh, in the short term. But long term, I think we're, uh, you know, nothing's really resolved yet. We look at, um, look at the commodity markets. You know, that's not great for the Aussie um, with copper down, you know, gas and coal down, iron ore down. Uh, wheat, oil, gold, uh, commodity index also down. So commodity currencies should continue to be the weaker one. Um, so the play I like is um, is buying the euro um, or selling the, selling the US against them. But you know I like to trade one strong currency versus a weak currency, not a weak currency versus a weak currency. Um, that's not uh, when you do that you get this sort of sideways action when you want bigger moves you want the a strong currency versus a weak currency so um, you know trading the euro Aussie um, or the euro Kiwi something like that um, might be more beneficial than trading the majors um, yeah, and mention stocks so I think that's where we're at today um, Obviously, more news to come out of the UK with um, how they're going to deal with uh, inflation when we get their inflation numbers um, in the middle of the week. But volatility, traders love it. All the best with it. Be safe out there.